Integrity. That's called courage. Free up your mind. Use your imagination. All you need to know is I'll get you there. Learning. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Welcome to the Open House Podcast. Our guests are our students. Opinionated, daring, and ridiculously smart. They ask tough questions about life and about learning. This podcast is by them and for them. Thank you so much, Anveshan Srijan, for joining us. Uh, tomorrow uh, is Valentine's Day, so consider this episode a Valentine's Day special. Yes. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, I think when I think of love, I I think of beauty. But uh, beauty is a very subjective idea, and we are all always caught up in opinions and anxieties about do I look nice in this picture or does that boy think I'm cute? Um, and social media has obviously amplified these uh, concerns. Um, our theme today is body positivity for boys and for men. We have Shrijan, who is a 17 year old from Calcutta, studying at Saint James. He challenges society standards through his writing, his photography, and his 3 a.m. doodles. Our guest speaker today is Anvesh Sahu, who is a blogger, artist, and model. He was crowned Mr. Gay World India in 2016, and um, he's currently working at HDFC as a visual designer. Um, my first question is actually about the ideal body type for men. Uh, of course, the correct answer is that all body types are ideal body types. But according to beauty standards, what is that ideal, and what are you constantly compared against? Yeah, either of you can um, start. Okay, okay, perfect. Um, so uh, I think we'll we'll let Srijan start. I want to listen to what yeah. Srijan has to say about this because I yeah, have too so many. Yeah, I have quite a bit to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, growing up, I was pretty pretty hefty. So uh, even as a child, you know, when I saw my peers coming to school, all lanky figures, and they just fit right in with each with each other. And mm-hmm. when I tried to mix with them, it was very awkward. But not not because they were saying something which was like off putting, but like like I looked at myself and I was like, do I belong here? When I was growing up with my friends, uh, I really did not belong like in any of the conversations they were having because they were like. How do I build muscle? How do I grow bigger? How do I? And I was just trying to be smaller. I was just trying to be like I. I was just trying to fit into my chair, like to be honest with you. And then as I got like exposure from the internet, I, I realized that everyone like really expected boys and men to like grow up, you know, like take to a sport, like really build muscle, like become, you know, lean, and all these things. And it really took a toll on me because. Every time I tried to do that, I was pushed back by either my own body, or health conditions, or my parents, or my peers who were made, like. As we grew up, the taunts just got worse. So, like, it's been pretty. Like, I, and I saw it's. It wasn't just me either. Like, I saw other kids also. Like, you know, people who were too skinny. They were. They got bullied constantly. Like you know, you we I think we have we've all heard the terms you know like math stick, the ruler scale, all these things like, and it was really tough watching that like as a person who was like kind of hefty because I had my own fair share of like taunts you know like I don't know it's underlying but at the same time it's so obviously in my face that I have to be this person and if I'm not this person then I will get like in some way or the other like. Like isolated, so that kind of pushed me into like really going into like basketball. You know, like that was the sport for me, and through that I kind of got fitter. But at the same time, I thought that I really gave in to that isolation. Like I really like feared that isolation so much that I had to like resort to basketball. It wasn't like a hobby; it was more of a thing I resorted to in order to escape bullying. It's very funny that you said that because for me, like, I had to get into sports so that I could fit in with other boys instead of you know um, because I was anyway too lanky. So somehow didn't really care or you know was uh, I wasn't ever bothered about you know how I looked. But I had to at one point take up um, tennis, and because I just didn't like every time there was yeah. education class, class में सारे बच्चे बहुत excited होते थे and I was the only one who was. I didn't want to interact with the other boys, and um, 
so i eventually ended up you know taking up tennis and i was like maybe this is going to be a you know safe space and thankfully the teacher was very accommodating so i remember there was this another girl she was like the you know hottie of the class very conventionally pretty fair skin light eyed and she was also very sweet to me but uh, uh i used to just like you know go along with her ke acha chalo saath mein milke we'll figure out uh, at least you know these half this 30 minutes of my day i just want to get done with and in in a way such that i don't have to be around uh, other boys uh but um, yeah i think uh, i'm i'm glad you mentioned about that that fact that you know either you too skinny or you too uh, you too heavy you will anyway be uh, yeah. you know bullied and picked on but i think for me personally uh, my journey was uh, growing up uh, i actually never was uh, too um uh, bothered with at least the face or the facade because somehow i was always told you know i i come from a very academically inclined family so everybody around me was like you know um just study study do well mm-hmm. and that's what's going to start your life for the you know the 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 rest of your life so uh, for me it was always about let me just make sure that i'm getting the highest scores in the class and everything else will be uh, you know taken care of and in some ways it was taken care of because you know if i was being bullied in class or if i was felt uh, made to feel lesser or less of a man than other of than, than the rest of my peers i could at least you know get a 30 on 30 in my uts and be like you know what i've arrived i've compensated for all uh, the, the mean things that were said to me by my peers mm. so mm. it was a very um, interesting phase but i think uh, all of that really became more and more visible when uh, when i actually won mr india i think um, i was a regular you know engineering student only uh, you know 20 years i was 19 going on 20 just didn't uh, somehow um, i was just not aware of the pageantry system in any way at all so even if there was a campaign around me i was still uh, supposed to you know look a certain kind which i didn't realize initially when i won because i was like you know you know what the way i am this is what i'm going to take uh you know to the patent and then this is going to become the new novel i was i was living in my head i was delusional enough to believe that this is going to become the new standard i still am i still am very delusional about it but mm-hmm. i think once i was there and um, i started realizing i remember in fact there was this um, you know online you know system hota hai every time before you before the pageant they have these there these different blogs they start you know um, ranking you know top 10 candidates for mr gay world this time and mm-hmm. i didn't to any of the you know top 10 uh, lists and i was flabbergasted i was like how can this happen like i'm so just i'm so beautiful and uh, of course i mean they didn't really care i eventually did make it to the top 10 but uh us time pe like i was i was i would look at them and be like yaar uh, they really don't find me beautiful at all and then of course there was a lot of bullying here back in india as well especially by the lgbtiq community which is so sad that you know you have this one person who finally like you know representing the country um, i think a lot of them also would come up to me and they they'd be like you know you don't represent me you do, you would just represent your organization somehow at that point in time never really got bothered but uh, and i th- i think in in a lot of ways i had sort of learned to numb myself but i do also very un- very well understand that not everybody is going to have that kind of a dna where you know not everybody has to numb their feelings down to feel you know a little better about themselves so um i actually took all of that negativity and then i was like you know what i believe that i'm beautiful and i'm going to show everyone what my vision of beauty is and that that's how my melanin everyday series uh, you know came into being where uh, you know i started uh, painting myself you know black and white and then uh, i would just you know take this skinny body of mine and then uh, you know represent it in the most beautiful and the most aesthetic way that that you know uh, was beautiful to me and then over time everybody started finding it uh you know when it comes to women we have an obsession with light skin um is it the same for men as well but oh, <laughs> oh my god yes yes it's not like it's not like men are trying to be the like, fairer every day some some are i won't lie hmm. but at the same time if you aren't a, a certain level of fair you will face certain comments you will face certain taunts and it can Such be you know, like you know <laughs> like kalu hmm. like it's such an insulting way to like address a person 
ஒரே <laughs> Like mm. they don't give that up very easily and if a person doesn't like it often time especially at a younger age they are trying to fit in so they probably like avoid conflict by not like like not uh, going against it not refuting it They're, they just they like, go along with it for for a while but after a while it really takes a toll on the person who is being bullied over here because they like literally can't take it anymore especially when it's in class where they don't expect to be bullied like this but yeah uh, fairness is definitely something i have seen uh, a lot of my peers struggle with and on top of that you know like i've also seen fairer people be very conscious about you know blemishes or marks or acne it really mm-hmm. bothers them a lot and you know, you know it it's it's something which they really they like, have a hard time accepting and it's not just exclusive to fair people like any kind of skin imperfections is like very hard for people to like accept like, especially me <laughs> like i had a like a, lo- a very tough time accepting that i have a like beard like i really did not want to have a beard i, I was disgusted by it i used to shave like some like even at the age of 14 i used to like violently shave my face mm. and yeah like after a point you really need to tell people like you have to let people know that you know it's okay your skin color or your skin like blemishes it does not it 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 isn't that noticeable and uh it isn't that big of a problem you know if it's a, a certain health issue where your skin is like acting up then sure yeah like consult a dermatologist for something but please don't let like other people's perception of your skin like don't let that affect you or your confidence about your like or your uh, appearance or your portrayal you know like Hmm. that i i also in the middle in fact in the middle i also wanted to be a bit fairer i used to wash my face three times a day in because hmm. i thought that, you know if i just wash this dirt off maybe my skin will like really glow hmm. <laughs> weird yeah. conception i had yeah did it work <laughs> no definitely not <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> Uh, I remember uh, telling uh, this to my friend all the time uh, back in college that uh, you know what I'm gay I'm femme and uh, I'm dark uh, so what's privilege even <laughs> and uh, you know I would I would joke about it but I think over the years what I've learned is that you know uh, it's it's not the words that hurt you it's our perception of those words that hurt us more so even if uh, there were all these comments about me being too dark but uh, i was like you know what let's just embrace it and let's see where we can take this and i think um i mean uh, i can totally relate to srijan's story about you know washing your face uh, to sort of you know get off those blemishes or get off those uh, uh, your dark skin and um, i remember taking a loofah and just like scrubbing on my face when yeah. i was 12 Uh, to just like get off the i was actually trying to get off the pimples i remember and uh, my mother would always say you were so much fairer when you were younger you just grown darker and darker with the years and every time we would go back to uh, my uncle's place um, they would always say that you know what every time you come back home you're always darker than than you uh, than you used to be so uh, like what is going on what's wrong with you stop going out in the sun and all of that um and uh, of course i think uh, I do agree to to some extent with the fact that women have it even harder because I mean I uh, we were in a joint family setup um and every time I would uh, go back to my uncle's place I would see that you know the the aunts from my side uh, of the family they were relatively darker than the other aunts so they would always you know be taunted and be told that you know what you're not going to get married or you're not going to get the right kind of husband and there was always this perception that you know you have to be a certain kind of or the, a certain standard or level of beauty and that did include the skin color to to you know be accepted by the society and to be celebrated in some way so that in a lot of ways did get into my head as well and of course there were plenty of people who were you know calling these names you know kallu and all of that but 
I think, like I said, you know, I was already gay and uh, I was already femme. So, you know, people calling me Kalu is like least of my interest because I have other, uh, you know, bad words to, you know, deal with in, all, in my day. And uh, I'd rather be, you know, trying to combat all these words which are being thrown at me. So, uh, mm. Uh, and of course, I think over the years, I've also learned to do, you know, I learned how to um, do my makeup. I found uh, the base which would look nice on my skin because I, of course, grew up, you know, using that white foundation. Um, so over the years, I started learning how to sort of, you know, tweak things the right way. And then I realized, okay, you know what, it's my perception uh, and the way I look at myself. And if I believe that I'm beautiful, then people are going to see that. So I think makeup has like uh, uh, in a lot of ways like very transformational for me because uh, I was able to sort of you know paint my face in a certain way even as a guy like I think and right now I think there's a lot of other male bloggers who've started doing that as well which is really good like it's, I think makeup is for everyone it's not gendered at all so mm -hmm. once I started embracing that started painting my face in a certain way and then getting of course the attention it really sort of um, helps you sort of push your uh, you know you know your perception of yourself a little higher mm -hmm. Uh, before hmm. Hmm. you know Shrija this is very interesting that you mentioned you know not liking your beard because that that's my next question actually you know uh, facial hair is such a big deal in school and teenage boys always tend to tease each other about it Ki, even if you have hair or if you have too much of it either way hmm. uh, you know you're, you're teased so really like what is the big deal about it and can you take us into this conversation oh my god um Facial hair. Facial hair is something which I, at least I have struggled with since I was 12, I guess. Hmm. Because I started, I, I started getting a mustache when I was in class 7. Hmm. So people started like, at least my peers immediately noticed it. And at first it was very nice because they were like, oh, he's like hitting puberty. He's becoming a man. All this. <laughs> no, but then afterwards, when it got more, and then when my peers weren't getting it, they were like, Dude, like, are, are you okay? Like, like, what is this? And they, they, they started calling me Chewbacca. They started calling me Bhalu and all these, all these names. Yeah. Especially because, like, it's not just facial hair. It's like arm hair, body hair. Especially yeah. since basketball, you have to like really change. Like, <laughs> at least boys' locker rooms, you go there and then you have to change. Like, there's no mm -hmm. stall to like go in and get your privacy, unless you want to go go and do it in the like toilet seat stall. Yeah. Like, and which that, that I did that because I tried changing in front of everybody once and immediately I think every single person in that room laughed because I had like a more body hair than an average like 14 year old mm. so I from that point onward I had to like go to the like like bathroom cubicles and I have to, I have to change and then I had to get out mm. and you know hair is such a sensitive thing because it's so normal it's so normal, but we're made to feel that it's not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had such a hard time accepting. I used to, like, aggressively shave myself because I was like, no, I have to be chikna and I have mm -hmm. to be smooth. So it has to be smooth. I used to shave my arms, my legs, everything. And mm -hmm. because I just wanted to, like, fit in. I wanted to be a boy, like, small. I wanted to be, like, a 14-year-old boy. I didn't want to hit that mark yet. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, like, they, and you hear things like, you know, how... Uh, hair isn't that attractive or hair doesn't look sanitary for some reason. Your sanitization depends on your like sanitary habits. It, it's not your hair, which is mm -hmm. dirty. Hair isn't inherently dirty. It's just a growth of hair. Like then mm -hmm. this is all, if, if my body hair is dirty, then this is like disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I had, I had to go through a lot of that. And I think I struggled, I still struggle with it today, I'll be honest, I, I can't come up here and say that, oh my god, it doesn't bother me anymore because I learned to accept it. I still struggle with it. Hmm. But I think I'm definitely making huge strides, like, in, at least like at least now, I've, I've been on a no-shave streak for like a month now. I, I, that's I'm because we have both coming in. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> I said that's because we have both coming in. <laughs> I don't know. Don't man. blame it on no shave November. <laughs> <laughs> um, my body hair as well. I'm just, I'm just not as bothered by it because I, I'm so thankful for my peer group because they're all so they're like awkward. forward looking and so progressive, okay. and I'm really happy that I found them because they really helped me accept me for myself and my like body hair as well. 
so thanks to them i changed my own perception and realized that yeah this is okay other people's perceptions weren't acceptable to begin with so now i have to start living my own life you know not i i i can't let other people's perception about my body hair like determine whether i'll shave today or not you know it's my decision at the end of the day so yeah and in fact it got <laughs> I'll, i'll share this with you okay like it it got, like I, there was a point with where i was going through eating i, I was going through an eating disorder like a few months ago. i still am like i was diagnosed with bulimia uh, nervosa and i lost a lot of weight because of purging and after a point my body built resistance to food so when you get that lanky and you can see your ribs the hair irritates you even more mm-hmm. you know like it, it's like i don't know i just saw myself as this very disgusting silhouette and mm. i can't stress enough of how important like good friends are because they really can like help you get through these tough times i'm not I, like honestly without them i would not be speaking about it here you know i i can't say that i wouldn't be here but i would definitely not have the confidence to speak about these things i would definitely not have the confidence to to like keep this body hair at all i would still be aggressively shaving my cheeks i would still be like shaving off my body hair hmm. but yeah it's just something which you have to accept first and then you have to listen to the criticism which people have to say if it is criticism at all so most of it is just gibberish hmm. so if people have criticism for you listen to it after you start you know accepting and loving yourself for who hmm. i think uh, with me personally i remember around the time i was like 13 14 i had actually completely uh, become so scared with the fact that you know i was going to get into that age where i am going to have body hair and i'm going because i could see hair growing in parts of my body and i didn't expect at all i was like okay oh god like i'm not uh, <clears throat> i'm not going to be the way i used to be earlier and of course there's no discussion around this that happens with parents as well so they don't even tell you that you know these are the changes kind of changes that are going to happen with you and i think more and more as i was starting to realize that you know i am attracted to men somehow that my perception my pop perception of you know being gay was was also uh, very much you know it mirrored the popular perception of being gay so i was like you know gay men don't have hair they're not supposed to have hair they're supposed to be smooth to be like completely shaved and all of that and of course i mean there are tribes in gay men as well but like i was always i was only aware of you know uh, the twinks uh, as we call it and i was like okay this is how twinks are supposed to be and i'm not i can't have body hair and i was just so scared of having any form of body hair because i felt like it was not going to make me look uh the way i used to look you know the way um, like the boyish face that i had it was no more going to be there and especially i think i remember every time mummy would say you know go and uh, you know get it shaved uh i would get very irritated i was like you know this is my personal space this is like you know, you're not supposed to be telling me we come come shave karna hai kab kab nahi ke pas jana and all of that so mm. initially it was, it was quite a struggle to just sort of understand okay now my body is about to change and let's see what's what it's going to be like but i think over the years um uh, i have sort of started embracing uh like facial hair for sure and i think i in fact love it like at one point in time i had completely stopped shaving and it had become a little bossa but uh, uh, i think i started learning how to sort of groom it the right way and i think just having fun with it and i think now i've reached a point where i'm like it's makeup for me like it yes. if you i mean if i'm able to sort of uh, groom my hair the right way then it's uh, you know it's going to be great on you so It's going to take some time. I think teenage years are the years where you really, really struggle with facial hair, and uh, I believe I think gay or straight men, like all kinds of men in general, but they, I think they do sort of um, struggle with the fact that there's something going to happen that's going to happen to their body which they were not expecting at all, and you just don't know what's what it's going to look like. You don't know the kind of growth you're going to have, uh, but especially like when when you start getting hair like at the back of your, uh, you know, oh your my back God. Back and all yeah, of that. Yeah. that is not considered you know pretty at all or just not like mm-hmm. not not good looking in any way so um, mm-hmm. and i think uh, sujan also mentioned about you know changing clothes and all of that uh, uh, you know with other boys i used to get so scared every time i think not just because of hair but also because of the way you see your body i mean somehow mm-hmm. you just comfortable at that age especially jab hum jaate the trekking pe jaate the you to be in you know in a in a confined space with other boys uh, it's going to be like a tent kind of a structure you no more going to get like you know washroom mein ja ke you can't 
just change and come because you don't sometimes you don't even have washrooms like the way you got it to be so um i think those are the spaces where i started uh, feeling really really conscious and there were a lot of other reasons as well not just the fact that you know uh, it was what hair but i think it was the way i would look at something for the kind of body that i had or just the uh, sometimes you know look at it perhaps uh, from the perspective of you know like if a girl is asked to change in front of another guy like she would feel so um, insecure and just like extremely shy you're not you're not used to that kind of things those kind of things and i think for me initially it was like i'm attracted to men and i'm supposed to uh, mm. change in front of these these group of boys uh, whether or not i'm attracted to them it's just it's still a very conflicting get to me i mean i would get very 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 shy even using like washrooms with other boys i remember especially during btech years when i had to move to a college with other boys living in a hostel that was like a nightmare to me sometimes because mm. everybody would think that you know it's such a fun thing you know you you gay you getting to be with other boys it's not that at all you mm. are so because i have in fact especially for me like i would always look at boys as a threat or someone who's going to bully me someone who's going to pull me down so for me it was always like can't stay around uh, you know boys at all but i think over the years i have overcome a lot of that fear especially when you start explaining yourself to other boys and it's so important to have these discussions which is why i always say if you can afford to come out please come out talk about yourself you know men the definition of what it means to be man today has completely changed you can be a trans man you could be a homosexual man you could be a cis man you could be anywhere in the spectrum and still be associating yourself um, you know to uh, to masculine things there's there's so much to masculinity now than than the user used to be and i think it's important that we have all these kinds of discussions so we know that there are going to be different kinds of men around us and it's okay for them to be you know uh, mm-hmm. around maybe there no more are going to be just you know football playing basketball playing boys there are all kinds of boys now you know both of you actually did talk about um, having these conversations and discussions with your peer groups how much of it is already happening um is it a safe space to have these conversations um personally uh it wasn't it wasn't to begin with nobody was uh, welcoming those sorts of conversations until they actually got like substantially comfortable with me hmm. uh but at the end of the day if you are comfortable enough with the person you can uh, share and receive a fair share of like vulnerability you know they like, that vulnerability can really help if the other person is willing to like sustain it you know like if the other person is willing to like you know accept you for who you are and like accept your grievances with yourself and like tell you that it's not that big of a deal like they still like love you for who you are then it 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 couldn't be better but at the same time i have for like countless times like failed in that area. i have trusted like friends like with certain information and they have really either not given it any heed whatsoever and just gave me very shoddy advice but uh, they which doesn't even work because they don't even have experience in that area or they have uh, really gone, gone ahead and talked about it to other people you know uh, so it's really difficult and it's they like, very like rare to find people who are very accepting of that but i will say this i have been very very surprised by the amount of accepting and progressive people there are on the internet there are whole communities who just who are just there to support each other and grow together as people and it has been so good to be exposed to that because it's helped me tremendously and i've seen people like really getting the help which they desired for so long that and it's it's honestly very emotional and it's very it's very heartwarming for me to see like people coming together and helping each other having conversations which uh, they never thought they would have had with uh, people even as close as their family um a lot of these conversations happen perhaps once you start growing up you know, maybe when you're too mm-hmm. young Oh, I think it's very difficult. You're already dealing with so many other things, but I'm yes. India, especially like we are so uh, bothered with uh, you know exams, hai, padna hai, all of that, which in some ways is a good thing also. I mean, now as I've grown up, I've sort of started looking at the good and the bad for everything. So um, I think over the years, 
now sometimes I do have really, really, you know, very personal conversations with other boys uh, from my batch, and uh, we've had all of these conversations even in hostel rooms and such. So. um i guess i I'm, i'm glad that a lot of those conversation that we used to have in the on the internet now has also sort of you know seeped into our mm-hmm. real life conversations because that is very important you can't just have you know conversations on the internet uh, with uh, the veil of anonymity sometimes it's important it's way more important in fact to have that conversation um in reality because that's when you can actually put your uh, words into actions and uh, you know if you see something ha- you know wrong happening or if you see a conversation going uh, south you can actually you know you can stand up for uh, what you believe is the right thing to do and then you know drive that conversation in a more um, positive uh, direction mm mm-hmm. uh you know there are many uh, role models when it comes to body positivity i can think of sai pallavi who just refuses to use makeup to hide her acne um and she's Love genuinely her. like a badass um, oh my god she's so beautiful and she is just she is perfect she dances beautifully she looks gorgeous she has amazing sense of style and is like you said like is a total badass does amazing films like such an incredible yeah. role model for anyone Yeah, but who are, who are, who are these role models for you? Um, can you think of some other people? I'll be honest, well, this kind of person, but one of my friends, Oraya Bhattacharjee, I think Open House has done quite a few sessions with her. Yeah, she was uh, one of the first people to actually help me get through these problems which I was having with my own body perception. She mm-hmm. was really, like, she was really helpful about it. She, from day one like when i started opening up to her i felt right at home and mm. you know she's unbelievably like she's an unbelievably talented and beautiful person and she is doing great work on her instagram they really like spreading a positive message and doing everything yeah mm. she she's definitely a role model of mine uh, i think for me personally um growing up um you always told me right that there is a certain kind of uh, body that it becomes the ideal body so like the david or 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 rithik roshan's body um uh, like they were the ideals for me growing up around me but somehow i didn't also connect a lot to that kind of a body mm-hmm. and uh, i think that's when i started finding all these references online you know maybe a rick owen or um, you know a mark jacobs or uh, a freddy mercury these were people who were sort of breaking out of that uh you know gender gender binary and those people would always attract attract me and i think i was always of course you know you know very attracted to that concept of androgyny so i was like you know what i want to define my kind of beauty or my kind of body type and that's what i'm going to eventually you know create and i think over the years as i've started watching and following a lot of you know a myriad of drag queens um i think i especially drag race the way it projects a different kind of masculinity or mm-hmm. a different kind of gender expression i think that's something that i'm very happy about and very happy that it has you know made its way to popular culture you know all mm-hmm. of these things you know are recoven's body is very popular on the internet but it might not be very popular you know amongst uh you know us you know having these conversations regular conversations around me in my in my own classroom class mein aane ke baad sabko ronaldo ki body chahiye but we let's have you know these conversations about all these different kinds of body and i think you know find where we you know lie in that entire spectrum of these different kinds of body types so um i think i'm um, to be very honest i think when i every time i look at all these beautiful drag queens i'm like okay um you know out of drag Mm. I'm like wow I mean uh, this kind of body has never been represented in popular culture but it very much exists and I can relate to this so um to be very honest these are the kind of people you know that inspire me a lot I think people from the community and uh, every time you know maybe like when you know when you look at a Ravi by Shampa Gultia he would get all different kinds of people on to uh, his runways and i think that's so important because then there is there is someone like me just you know from a small village in odisha reading that newspaper and finds that image of a certain kind of model who is so different from what he has from the uh, you know shahid kapoor or, or or the amisha patel kind of a body uh, amisha patel is such amisha a- patel is <laughs> Why would I pick Amisha? Have you got me? You've given <laughs> away your age now. <laughs> oh my God! I am talking about. Listen, I was like four when when Rithik Roshan and Amisha Patel ki movie aayi thi. I think I was just talking about Rithik Roshan and then Amisha Patel came. Ah, <laughs> uh, 
you know i mean both of you actually spoke about internet finding support on the internet um but is body positivity like anything more than a social media trend is there more to it definitely i mean body positivity is uh it's mostly something which should be a way of life it should be like an everyday part of your life you know it's it should be normalized to the extent that it shouldn't be a topic to speak on it should be something which is inherently a part of our like upbringing and our like personality itself we shouldn't have to have like we shouldn't be like required to like recover from damage you know like, we shouldn't be required to whether huh? it has already become a part of our you know perception like it should be of course hands down it should yeah. be part of our regular conversations but has it yeah. yeah no far from it right now it's something which definitely needs to be spoken about far and wide and you know like it really makes me happy again to see like all these things up like us speaking right here and so many things about body positivity you know worldwide and it really makes me happy but mm-hmm. hopefully in the future like at least like for children at least like children come to my mind every time i think about this because i remember as a child not being like content with my own body i just don't want any other child to go through what uh, a lot of people go through on a daily basis and just judge themselves and then have to resort to you know like going to therapy or finding support in the on the internet or really like depending on other things in order to feel better about themselves that is the goal of this thing but at the mm. same time i feel like as of right now we should really just put our heads down and just like try spreading all the love we can yeah. because there is clearly a lack of it in the world it's very much still there on instagram and um, I, what is there on instagram is first of all in no way uh, yeah. you know can be related to what is in uh, reality because like earlier i remember that era when you know um, i was one of the first people to to join instagram when it come 20 2010 2011 um and uh, I remember earlier Instagram was all about you know aap kahi bahar ja rahe ho you just take a picture and then you post it on Instagram you, you play around with the filters it's fun to have all of that it no more Instagram is in no way any of that anymore mm. today everything is filtered even in in the indian uh, amongst the indian audience everything is just so filtered and everything is corrected and i completely understand i mean even when i put out some of my work like for me everything is uh, my instagram is is a complete like you know visual spectacle so i i of course we touch my pictures and especially for my with my artworks i play around a lot with the proportions because that's what i do uh Talk, talk about it i also tell everybody that okay you know what this is a perception this is this is not a uh, reality like this th- these images are recreated i create a spectacle for you and this is a vision this is an illusion uh but um i don't think everybody who's i, I don't think india is yet smart enough to you know, look at the internet and be like okay let's question if this is right or wrong we still are very much not looking at everything and then we think okay this is perfect this is it um and i don't know how much you know the conversation has to really like seep into the two tier three tier audience in india we are having this conversation great we are mm-hmm. able to probably we will probably be able to have this conversation with our own peers as well but even sometimes with my own peers i struggle to have these conversations so let's not even get into you know have, you know whether we will be able to have these conversations with you know people who probably don't even have access um to you know the kind of content that we perhaps have access to maybe Mm-hmm. maybe i had access to a grail jones as a reference and be like okay you know what this is amazing great someone's doing a rajini someone has done it like way back in the 80s but how many people like me uh, you know even have uh, access to those kind of references we still are going to look at you know in television we still are going to look at uh, a certain kind of instagram uh, influencers as well we are not looking at all kinds of instagram influencers and we become our complete perception Uh, do you both feel that body positivity for men isn't talked about as much as it is for women both need to be like talked about more but mm. in comparison if we like if we like we really need to compare then yeah male body positivity is not spoken about enough but, like, as much as uh, we women because mm-hmm. i uh, it's just i think it's just that the women are uh, 
I'll be honest, have to go through more stigma, have to face more backlash. Mm-hmm. They and they have been going through this for a long, long time. So have men, but uh, with women, it's just a very, very out in the open and very obvious thing which needs to be stopped. Mm-hmm. So with like male body positivity coming up, it's definitely a refreshing like change. But at the same time. i would not say that either is like spoken like about enough like women's body positivity needs to be spoken about more so does men mm-hmm. but at, at the same time it's i'm just glad that men's body positivity is a thing now and mm-hmm. it is being spoken about at least definitely needs a lot more exposure mm-hmm. but yeah I think I have more like you know reached a point in my life where I don't take anything too seriously. So uh, and but I'm I'm a different kind of you know person. As well. I think I've had a very unique experience in a lot of ways as well. And um, you know other boys around around me or my age they have a very kind of different they've had a very different kind of uh, you know upbringing. So uh, or, or, and perhaps you know different kinds of experiences in their uh, adult life as well. So. um i don't think i will be able to speak perhaps for everybody around me but i from the little that you know from what i have personally experienced um honestly can't really you know bother myself enough with uh, what the perception is of you know what uh, a certain kind of body should be but i think uh, we need to perhaps also redefine what masculinity is and in that uh, you know journey we will be finally able to uh, you know understand or redefine what it means to have a certain uh, you know a different kind of male body as well all of that conversation mm-hmm. will happen dheere dheere karke i think there's just too much on our plate right now you know to to be talking about and we can't some maybe when i was like you know 18 i used to believe that you know everything is going to change like tomorrow but yeah. over as i've seen dheere dheere karke getting there we getting to redefine all those little uh, you know things we we finally talking about misogyny even you know uh, amongst men the way men treat other men like it mm. can be it can come up, come across as very sexist and some some sometimes it can be very uh, you know demeaning in in some way so we learning to also talk in different ways uh, with other men um you know this is actually the final question for the for the day um You, you talk of embracing your body the way it is it's not something that happens overnight it's an everyday thing uh can you talk about how you actually do this how you what is it that goes into it every day do your studies do your sports mm-hmm. eat your food and just do whatever you want and do whatever that makes your life like valuable and like you feel happy That's very profound <laughs> advice, actually. I love that. It's very good advice, Sujana, and I'm so glad you have it right now. That understanding that it's actually your uh-huh. your uh, perception of yourself, whether yeah. you value yourself or not, that should be the uh, like the most important thing in your life. So do everything yeah. that uh, you know makes you feel uh, a little more valued. You know, take those stalls. Uh, you know, have your chai. Uh, have your coffee you know you will get there you you will you will figure it out we all do hmm so this has been a lovely 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 episode um i think the parting thought the one that i'm actually really taking away with me is what shrijan said uh, about when you look at yourself in the mirror if you're smiling and you're happy that's fine and the rest is just noise thank you so much this has been a lovely conversation and and i hope we talk about it more in the future and i'm sure that everyone who is listening to this is going to find uh, like a gold mine of quotable quotes quotable quotes <laughs> all right hmm Perfect. So, just so you all know, we had to start this recording all over again because uh, <laughs> because I was so you know in myself that I was like you know I want to I want to thank you, thank Sudhika, thank um, you know Srijan, and thank Open House for actually making this conversation happen. I'm so glad and really happy to be uh, you know part of conversations like these. It sort of charges me up as well. You know, sometimes I need to listen to myself. Sometimes I, I always keep telling this to myself that you know. I always keep going back to those articles that I wrote when I was seventeen because I was like, "Where did all this philosophy come from?" Like, I have not been that a lot of that in my life. So, yeah, really happy to be a part of this conversation. Yeah, same, dude. Like, Sudhika, thank you so much for inviting me. I remember I was like sitting and eight days stuffing cinnamon rolls in my face when she called me. Do <laughs> you want to be a part of a podcast? I'm like, yeah, ma'am, that's great. <laughs>
But yeah, I'm I'm so glad that I got to speak about something which is so personal to me. Granted, I started to half the episode, but <laughs> but yeah, I'm just glad I got to speak to like you and Vesh and Sudipa as well. It's it's been a pleasure, and I I definitely won't forget. Thank you so much.